This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday morning. Now, earlier I mentioned that life is worth living. Today we're dealing with a story that I must say rocked all of our worlds and made us realize that life can be a lot shorter than what we think. In 2013, the Korki family made international headlines when the family who moved to Yemen to work with the poor were captured by Al-Qaeda militants. Now, they were separated and they suffered physical and emotional torture. And although Yulandi and her children were released, her husband was later killed on the day before his release and, uh, of course, that failed. But uh, here she is today to talk about her book, 558 Days, the recounts of this ordeal. Yulandi Koki, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Good morning. What a story. And to have to relive it through a book. So I want to talk about the, good, the book later on. Mm -hmm. But we first, I mean, be before this, I, I had a chat to you about what actually happened. And I just want to bring our viewers there first mm -hmm. before we talk about the book, 558 Days. Tell me a bit about why your family moved to Yemen. I almost want to say, what were you doing there? Mm -hmm. You're moving from Lumfontein mm -hmm. and you end up in Yemen. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, Ilana, a couple of years ago, we went on an exchange program to visit Yemen. And we just absolutely fell in love with the people. The Lord almost quickened our hearts and our eyes to their needs. And we realized that to go and serve people was a way to express God's love. And, and so off we went, you know, getting out of our comfort zone. Why not go and serve for a couple of years? Because they were not only just needing humanitarian aid, they were needing teachers, they were needing love, care, and we on earth is an expression of God's love. So we decided, well, let's go for a couple of years. And that's how we ended up teaching, working there, studying Arabic. So there you are, you are homeschooling the kids, your husband is teaching English, mm -hmm. you're also reaching out to the poor, you are doing some service in the hospital. Mm -hmm. A part of me thinks that's a beautiful and a wonderful story. But then you reach the point, you were captured by Al-Qaeda militants. What happened? Uh, Pierre's father passed away in, April, in May 2013 and we were on our way to travel back to South Africa for the funeral and to see to his mom. And our, our passports were caught up in the Yemeni system, which is very different from what we understand how that works here. And so um, we finally managed to retrieve the passports and we were on our way to collect them for the, to, to issue the visas and etc. And that afternoon we just drove into that trap that they had set for us and we were just not vigilant enough that afternoon. We were just exhausted, tired. Pierre's heart was mourning for his dad, and we just never saw this coming. I've learned subsequently that you were born in the U.S. Do you think that that had something to do with it? Al-Qaeda kidnappings, they usually target um, American citizens. So that they'd known maybe beforehand, I'm not sure about that, but anybody that visits Yemen that's a foreigner, to their minds look like American citizens. Yeah. I, I reached the point where I learned that gift of the givers, now they rescue you and the children. Why didn't they take Pierre with you? The negotiations for, for my release initially started with both of our, for, for both of us. Of course, we never knew what was going on on the outside world. We had no contact. So afterwards, we, we found out and Anas explained that he couldn't get us both out. And so he just continued to negotiate for one of us um, for free. And that was for me. They chose you? Yeah. Well, it's captured in this book, 558 Days. Yulandi Korki is in our studio this morning. We call her a survivor and someone who has been kidnapped and also released her husband, Pierre, didn't make it, but she is here this morning to tell us about her story. I am sorry for your loss. I am happy that you are here to tell the story this morning. So later on, we're going to touch on her book. So stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. You will land in and studio to talk about her book, 558 Days, the account and also the captivity in Yemen. This is still your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's time for the news.